This is Andy Perua for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And I'm delighted to be joined by promoter, manager, anything you can think of, he does it in boxing. Al Siesta. Al, first and foremost, how are you doing? Bro, I, I'm, I'm amazing. I'm very happy. I'm delighted. I'm excited. But I'm so knackered, man. I sleep two, three hours a day for the last two, three weeks. It's amazing. I mean, it's just like, I don't want to moan, but we're almost here. The show is tomorrow. I need to see, go and see Ring Girls. I don't know if I will be able to even turn up to check them out in terms of see if they're suitable. I mean, I've seen the pictures, they're good. Um, no, man, everything is ready. Stuff from my Google arrived this morning. We had to go to the customs terminal. I need to be there in person to collect it. As you can see, work is going on. They're putting the stuff together now. We're checking the arena and I'm so excited. Man, when it's all ready, when it's all ready, it will be looking amazing. Trust me, it will be looking amazing. So, man, I'm pleased. I'm always here. We had the weigh-in, official weigh-in today. Everyone made the weight. Everyone in the great spirit. We passed all the legislation. There's no COVID-19 cases within my camp. I'm negative as well. Zero from every direction. I never had it. I don't have it. So I don't have antibodies either. Um, so, man, just... Basically, we're ready to roll with Cold Wars, bro, you know? Oh, let's get into let's get into Cold Wars. Obviously, this is coming a couple of weeks later than what you originally kind of scheduled. How come the slight delay again? Brother, British Boxing Board of Control single-handedly made me to delay that. And I understand, I was very emotional recently and I had some, some kind of heated kind of words, you know what I mean? But... It was very frustrating. In those two weeks that we lost, those two weeks that we lost, exactly were the weeks that I supposed to promote my event. So they put me in absolute checkmate, never left me any time to promote the event. But you know what? If anyone hoped that I will quit, you just don't know me, I'm telling you. You just don't know me. You know what? I, I will go quiet with the first event because I don't have energy. And there's literally so much to do that I can't, you know, guys, we've got all these agreements, Boxing Social, IFL, all you guys are texting me saying, oh, when we're going to talk, I'm so knackered, man, absolutely. I'm just bloodshot, completely exhausted, and uh, there's just no energy. I, I, I need to be, I need to man up, you know, I need to become a bit of a more machine, really, in order to also sell event at the same time, you know? So, no, man, it's here. No, no, it's here, always right? non-stop. Man, absolute non-stop, I swear. You know what? I had incident today when I've been speaking on the phone to someone, giving interviews to the Russian press, and I had someone calling on Messenger and someone calling on the normal line at the same time whilst I was on WhatsApp. This is how crazy it is. I start ignoring the phone now because if you pick up every call, you just relentlessly be 24-7 on the phone, and it's not possible. Things need to be done. And everyone seems to be sending fires. You know that fire, little emoji of a fire. And mate, it's urgent. It's urgent and all that stuff. And everyone is like, WhatsApp is green and it's all urgent. You know what I'm saying? So insane, bruh. I'm telling you. Belarus, uh, we, Ministry of Belarus, Ministry of Sport, as I said already, Ministry of Medical Ministry and uh, Education and Tourism, really helpful, man. They really helped us. They gave us exclusions. We had COVID-19 tests done in two hours yesterday, and they gave us the permission to not self-isolate for Ukrainians, for example, and Kazakhstanis. They don't have to self-isolate. Man, it, at the moment, Minsk is my city. Al, talk to me about the card tomorrow, the fighters, and the rest of the fighters you have lined up, because we haven't actually had the chance to do an interview to discuss everybody who will be on your Cold War shows. Brother, I've lost you. I've lost you. Say again. I've I'll, lost uh, you there. I'll talk to me about the fighters that are going to be on the card tomorrow, talking about the card tomorrow and the rest of the cards. As we haven't had the chance to do an interview about everybody who will be on a Cold War show. Brother, let, let, me find, let me find some stand quickly so I can put the telephone and talk to you. But in the meantime, whilst I'm looking for the stand, you can check, check this out. Yeah? Ali certainly is coming together. How, how long have you been kind of working on the scene since you've been there then? They just started today, so can you see me? I can, yeah. Brilliant, man. I can stand in front of you now, so it's cool, man. I don't have headphones. You know, this phone, which I've got Samsung Fold, 
brand new one, like turning into the little iPad, you don't have a jack input. You can only use them, what do you call them, Bluetooth headphones, yeah. and I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm already like a robot. You know what I mean? So if I, it's just, but anyway, the card, cut tomorrow we've got two fights on the undercut which won't be aired on pay-per-view because we are tuning up the satellite making sure that tv is working checking the signal and so on and so forth that whilst the undercut is taking place and then after exactly uh 20 45 uk time there's a first fight between sergey gorohov and levan shonier at super middleweight two really, really strong guys. They gatekeepers, they Sergei Hamitsky type of fighters. Very, very evenly matched, bro. It's 50-50 all the way. There's no 60-40, there's no it's 50-50. I don't even know who's winning, honestly. And I'm a matchmaker. That's what I do for a living. I've got no idea who'll be winning in this fight. All I know, they're both very durable. They've got attacking style. They're very fired up. They've got attractive boxing style. There's no spoilers. So that will be straight away from the, what do you call it, from the wardrobe or you'll go the, the clothes hanger, we call it in Russia. When you come to the theater, first you see is a clothes hanger. From the clothes hanger, it will be absolute banger. Do you know what I mean? Absolute, straight away, right from the start. The second fight is Gajaliev against Gebertola Gajaliev, London Olympian 2012, fought for Azerbaijan. He's a Russian citizen. He comes from Dagestan, which is the same place where Habib comes from fights against a very, very durable journeyman, Artem Ayvazidi. The reason he fights a journeyman, I could not match him. The only guy who stepped up to the challenge was Ben Fields. Ben Fields said, Al, I don't care. I'll fight your guy. I'll fight your guy. But British board obviously held us, so Ben Fields fell through, unfortunately. Missed the opportunity to fight in such a beautiful program. And uh, Gebutel Agajali was fighting Artem Ayvazidi. It's an eight-round affair at lightweight. Fantastic fight. And the main, main event is incredible. Issa Chaniev, ex-world title challenger at lightweight, who fought Richard Comey in the United States on uh, Kovalev Alvarez undercut, got stopped in round two, still an incredible fighter. That was a little bit too early for him, coming back in the ring, fighting an animal from Ukraine and Vladislav Melnik. Vladislav Melnik, three times kickboxing world champion, two times full combat world champion, three times junior uh, multi-champion, man. The geese are so bubbly. He's so nice. He reminds me. Crossbreed between Bruce Lee and Golovkin. I'm telling you. You'll see him tomorrow. He looks like Golovkin and Bruce Lee had a baby. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible, bro. And Chani is fighting him. I saw a bit of attention on the wing. They saw each other physique. They realized it's a serious draw. Man, this show, guys, I would give you more fights if I would have had more money but I don't have enough money to put more fights. So I can only afford three good fights because look at this, it's being assembled now. It's being assembled now. It's a beautiful little arena. So I'm here guys, I'm here for you. I love you all. I'm a boxing enthusiast. Boxing is in my blood 24 seven. I live and breathe and I want you to enjoy the fantastic night of Siesta Boxing Cold Wars tomorrow. And we all, please support me, please spend the, 599 pounds or whatever is 627 in new kind of exchange rate. Please spend it for my sake, for your sake. Let's support Siesta Boxing. Let's support Cold Wars. Let's enjoy. And on the 30th, 3rd, and the 4th of August will be more experience and I'm going to bring you even more banging stuff. Al, very quickly before I let you go, because I know you're a busy man. What can you talk to us about with regards to the other cards? What can you let us in on? Brother, other cards, honestly. This card is good, but other cards are fantastic. We've got another European card with Aikshak Nazarian fighting against Georgi Chilaksaev in the main event. It's an equivalent Luke Campbell fighting Joe Cordina in England. I'm telling you. This is a real grudge match. They all, I think it's number one and number two super lightweight, but they're fighting at lightweight now. They're fighting at lightweight now. Do you understand? So it's a fantastic fight. We've got Andre Sirotkin, who lost to John Ryder fighting Artem Karpets. We've got Yevgeny Mishev, uh, Vladimir Mishev, sorry, fighting. Everyone knows this guy. I told this story with Danny Flaxen. Oscar Amador. The reason for that, Oscar Amador is a journeyman that all UK knows him. He was travel. He put on every promoter show. But during the pandemic, he missed the flight to Nicaragua. So he stayed in Spain all his time. 
and he found new dream with Gallego Prada. It's a really, really good company, boxing company. So he's part against Kiko Martinez, against Musa Golam. He's in incredible shape. And they begged me to put him into the Cold Wars. And I said, guys, I can't put him to Cold Wars because everyone knows who he is. He's a journeyman. I'm going to get slaughtered. They said, oh, didn't you say that you don't pay attention to zeros? I said, yes, I do. They said, so what? Well, you're contradicting yourself now. So I thought I'll give him a chance because he's durable and Mishif hasn't fought for a while. So that should be interesting as well. And I'm expecting for that to be it. Although I'm waiting to hear from Kazakhstani and Ukrainian team who wanted to fight for the WBA uh, Asian Pacific title and kickstart. So that's on the 30th. On the 3rd, Thank you and welcome from the first comrade Stepkowski, the Austrian Brit who's got British Boxing Board of Control license, starting at the show in the sixth round, uh, kicking off the show against Chechen man uh, Ramzan Baisarov. Very evenly matched fight. Baisarov hasn't fought for a long time. Padded record. Stepkowski, very tough. So it's a really, really good fight. You know what I mean? Stepkowski is a British, nice British kind of, kind of fighter. You know what I mean? Then after that fight, next, let me just remember what do we have? We have. My brain is going now. One second. <laughs> Don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. So Stepkowski first on the third. On the third. Who's the second? We've got oh, we've got Lucas Palingo, who's 13 and 0 or or 12 and 0. He's fighting Aslan Magomedov from Dagestan. Aslan Magomedov is four one in one. Out of those four wins, all four KOs. That geezer can bang. He's a novice. He just started. So his record four one and one, and he said, "I want that thirteen and zero guy. I want to see if his record is real." Do you know what I'm saying? So that is an incredible fight. That's an eight rounder as well. Yeah. So then after them, I have who do oh I have Sergei Shegashev, who is nine and zero, the kid who beat Daniel Yulisinov in amateurs, the Olympian world champion, the Olympian champion. Yes. He is 9 and 0. He's 31 years old. He's from Russia. He's a South for quite slick guy, but also didn't haven't fought for a while. He is fighting Kingsley Egbunike. Obi Egbunike. We managed by Mark Pryor, guy from London, our British fighter with Nigerian descent. Really good, really rangy, nice fighter. Great. He's a, a British African representation. Shigashev never was in the ring against the black man. So that's a brilliant thing. I'm looking forward to that incredibly. And there's a main event, Alexei Yevchenko, who is a Russian gatekeeper, top 100. And I'm waiting to hear still from the British opponent. Hopefully I'll deliver this in the next couple of days. That's the third. And the fourth is kicked off by Asinia Byfield against Ismail Aliyev. Super welterweight, fantastic 10 rounder. Very, very nice one, yeah? Then next fight after that is Albert Hamkoyev. I'm waiting for the confirmation for the opponent. It could be Breed. No one wants him. He's 3-0. Very talented. Breeds don't want to fight him. I'm asking people the 12-0, 11-3, people like that. No one want to know. They said, we're not fighting you, this Chechen guy, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? I must admit, Breeds, I have complained. You've been a bit pushing around, guys. You've been pushing around. I will tell the truth about me making you good offers you streaming me alone for days, saying, oh, I'm not really in the gym. Then I see you want to sign the fights with Warren and stuff. I check your Instagram. You all ripped to shreds doing all this pad work and all this sparring. But when I'm asking you, no one wants that smoke, boys. And I'm coming for you. Listen, I'm coming for you because I'll be very open about that. I won't call the names, but lots of you shut themselves when I offered you the deal. You can't do that. If you want to be a champion, if you want to be beyond British champion, you need to start taking, taking chances, guys. Because every single world champion took a chance, not once, I'm telling you. So I'm waiting for that opponent for Hamkoev. Then there's the next fight. Um, I tell you the main event. The main event is a fantastic fight between uh, Ali Ismailov, who comes, he's a 254 amateur, incredible fighter, spot with Dan Aziz, spot with Luke Watkins, spot with Joshua Boazzi. You speak to those people, they tell you the caliber of that kid. And no one wanted to take that fight apart from Dex Spellman. Dex Spellman took that fight and that was my pride and joy fight, pride and joy fight. But then obviously because British board messed me around for a while, 
uh, the experiment through its all and decided to fight Lyndon Arthur, obviously more money, British, all British fight, don't need to travel and stuff. And the only man who raised his hand and said, oh, here, we're ready to bash your kid up, is Lawrence Osoeke from Leeds or wherever he is, Newcastle. Sorry, guys, forgive me. Jodis, forgive me. This Honestly, I'm very quickly changing. He's from Newcastle, you know what I mean? So Lawrence Osoeke from Newcastle, awkward fighter, and he will be fighting in main event against Ali Ismailov, 10 rounds, light heavyweight contest. And I've got beautiful heavyweight Bonanza, which is on the same show. Jean Kasabutsky, heavyweight from Kazakhstan, fighting 10 rounds. I think it's for the IBF European title, or IBO you know, Intercontinental, 10 rounds against Kamil Sakalowski, the breed basher who knocked out uh, Nick Webb, who dropped and uh, stopped uh, 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 nailable, ball. And the guy is very durable. Beautiful box for you, just for 599. Just for 599. Or you can buy everything for 20 quid. Let's oh. go, or 22 pounds, whatever. Oh, that is a fantastic breakdown. <laughs> you said you were getting tired, but you don't see me. I will leave you both to do, to do the rest of your job and to prepare. Before I let you go, the final word to you. What do you like to say to everyone? Guys, remember, I'm doing it all for you. I'm not doing it for me. I'm a freak. Everyone knows that I love boxing. I could have done matchmaking, earned good money and never bothered with promotion. You know why? I know I'm very good. I know I can sell. I know I understand the boxing. And you know what? I think I understand the soul and the heart of a true boxing fan. So we're going to have really good fun together, guys. You are my family. You are my go and fund me promoter crew. Seriously, I'm your go and fund me promoter. But you are my family. Together, we'll make a difference in this world. We'll make boxing a better, a safer, and more exciting place. I love you. Twenty forty-five 45 UK time. I think it's six quid, six quid or something like that. Check Twitter, check Instagram, check all the details. And I'll see you tomorrow, guys. I'll stay safe and speak to you soon. Thank you. Brother, thank you. Thank you.